geometric sequences. Find the sheet. Got a couple of pages to go through. Yeah, do we get back? No? Oh, the mark, yeah. No? But the sooner we get through this, the sooner you get the mark. Write the next two terms of each sequence. 17 and 25. Negative 4, negative 7, negative 10, negative 13. Negative 16. The difference between any two consecutive terms is the same value. And the way we do that is we take a term and we subtract the preceding term. I'm seriously, the next time you talk, tearing up somebody's mark. Seriously. Okay? If you guys want to talk, I'll just pull sheets at random and rip them into shreds. And then that person won't get it back. And I won't even look to see, though they're alphabetical, so I'll you know, aim for the top if it's the top person being noisy. Okay. So negative 7 minus negative 15. You take a term, you subtract from it the preceding term. Okay, 1 minus negative 7. 9 minus 1. And this one, negative 7 minus negative 4. Now that's never how I do it, right? If I'm looking at it, I just say, well, how do you go from negative 15 to negative 7? Add 8. Okay, if I add 8 to negative, yeah, I get 1, and then I get 9, right? So I sort of figure out what it is and then kind of verify it. Well, I'll say, okay, subtract 3, subtract 3, subtract 3. Yeah, it works, right? That's pretty much what I'm looking at, right? But more formally, if we're trying to calculate it, this is how we calculate it, right? A lot of times we just do it by inspection. You just look at it and say, oh, yeah, add 8, subtract 8, whatever. A sequence is arithmetic if the difference between consecutive terms is a constant. The constant is called the common difference and is denoted by the letter D. Note that D is equal to T2 minus T1, T3 minus T2, T4 minus T3, and in general, T sub n minus T sub n minus 1. So that could be any, any value of n, right? So T50 minus T49, right? So I'll just subtract the preceding term. All right, so here's a question. What's the 20th term of each sequence, right? If I want to get the 20th term, well, the way we're going now, we just have to keep going. Right? Keep subtracting three or whatever until you know, counting on our fingers and toes until we hit the twentieth term. Not really a good way. So it's better if we could have a formula that relates each term to its term number. This formula is called the general term. So let's develop the general term for this sequence: negative fifteen, negative seven, one, nine. So we know that term one is negative fifteen. To find term two, we're going to add eight. We add eight again, or we add two eights, right? So you add eight. Add another 8 on here is like adding two 8s. Add another 8 on, now you've added three 8s. So if I want to get t10, how would I get t10? Minus 15 plus 9 8 9 8s. And if I want to get t sub n, negative 15 plus n minus 1 8s. So you can almost think of this as add 0 8s. Right, don't add any 8s, then add 1 8, add 2 8s. So as we go up in term number, we add one fewer than that of the common difference, right? So let's go a little more general. That was specific to that uh, particular sequence. So in general, we say we got T1. To get to the next term, we add on D, T1 plus D. To get from here to here, we add another D. So it's T1 plus D plus D, or T1 plus 2D. Then to get here... T1 plus 3D. T10 will be? T1 plus 9D. And T sub N will be? T1 plus? N minus 1 times D. And that... Why is it N minus 1? Really? Okay, just kidding. That was a hard S. The general... You know, the first one, we're adding no Ds, right? We just want the first term, so we're going to add zero Ds. Each subsequent term requires us to add another D, right? So when we hit T10, we've only added nine of them. When we hit T sub N, we've added N minus one of them, right? Like one fewer than the term number. Yeah, 
the so, like yeah, and is used to denote what we call the general term, right? So I want the fifth term, n becomes five. I want the twentieth term, n becomes twenty. I want the four hundredth term, n becomes four. So we have the general term of an arithmetic sequence is given by t sub n is equal to t1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, we're going to use that formula a lot today, anyways. Okay, for the arithmetic sequence, negative 20, negative 13, negative 6, 1, we want to find t35. We're then going to determine a simplified expression for t sub n, so we have to adopt a little bit different strategy. And we're going to determine n if the nth term is 631. Right. So this formula involves one, two, three, four quantities, right? You got t1, the first term. You've got, or sorry, you've got t sub n, the nth term. You've got t1, the first term. You've got n, how many terms or which term we're looking for. And you've got d, which is the common difference. So a formula that involves four terms, if we know four terms. If we know three of them, we can solve for the fourth, right? Because there'll only be one unknown, and we can solve for it. All right, so when I'm starting out, whenever I'm solving any of these arithmetic sequence types, well, first of all, I figure out what kind of sequence it is. Today, they're all arithmetic, right? But on the test, it would be, well, is this arithmetic or is it geometric? So you got to figure out, okay, so to get from 20 to negative 13, what do I do? Add seven. Add seven. Okay, let's write this down. So T1 is negative 20. D is positive 7, right? Negative 13 plus 7 plus 7. Yeah, okay, it works, right? It gets me into the next few terms. Um, we want T35. So T35 is what we're going to find. And what's N? 35, right? So we want the 35th term. So N is 35. We're going to find T35. And we need, in order to do that, we need T1 and we need uh, D. So let's start off with formula. I always do formula first, right? So T1 plus N minus 1 and minus 1 times D. Okay, T sub N. That's T35, right? So we're just going to write T35. Don't know what that is. We're going to try and find it. Negative 20 plus 35 minus 1 times 7. Right, so all we're doing is just filling into the formula, right? Secret to math. Formula, substitution, answer. What formula do I use? Oh, it's an arithmetic sequence. I'm going to use the arithmetic sequence formula. Okay, what values do I put in? I figured those out already. Okay, let's sub them in. So T35 is negative 20 plus 34 times 7. Uh, 34 times 7 is 210. 238 minus 20 is 218. T35 is 218. Okay, so we can say the 35th term is 218. Questions? T1 always first term. T1 is always first term. We don't always know T1, right? But if we know T sub n and n and d, we can calculate T1. If we know T sub n, T1, and n, we can get D. If we know D and T1 and Tn, we can get n, right? So as long as we have three of the four, we can get the four. This is a little bit different. Determine a simplified expression for T sub n. In this case, we need T1, and we need D, but we don't want n, and we don't want T sub n, right? Because we're going to write a formula like we did before. Uh, Negative 20. Yeah. Okay. Did we simplify that? Let's suppress the page. No, no, we actually we haven't done that yet. We're gonna do one. Getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so we're gonna come up with a simplified formula. So what this formula is gonna involve is T sub n is equal to, and then there's gonna be an n. We're about to develop that. Alright, so let's write it out. T sub n equals t1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, t sub n, we're not substituting in or working out, right? We're getting a general formula. Negative 20 plus, we're not substituting for n. Okay, we're 
just writing in the n minus 1. We're now going to simplify this expression. So negative 20 plus 7n minus 7. Okay, we're not done. We've got one more line, right, which is? So let's go 7n minus 27. So there's a formula, right? a nice simple formula. right? So now if I want to find t35, instead of having to do all of this, I just go, OK, 7 times 35, which is 207 times 30 is 210. So 245 minus 27 is 218. Right? Okay, so I can just substitute into this formula and get the exact same answers that I would. But here, we had to subtract 1 and then multiply by 7 and then subtract the 20. Right here, we just do the multiply and then the subtract and we're done. Okay? So if you're working out a simplified expression for T sub n, you just need T1 and D. You substitute them in and you simplify that expression. Okay, determine n if, so, okay, we know T1 is negative 20, we know D is 7, we know T sub n is 631, and it's n. That's the question mark, right, that we have to find. Again, four quantities, we know three of them. Okay, formula T sub n is T1 plus n minus 1 times D. T sub n is 631, is negative 20 plus, okay, we don't know n, so it's n minus 1 times 7. So we have formula like What formula? Yeah, nah, I want to show you this. But you Wait, could. I'm so you confused. could, yes. Where did, we have to write down T equal 9. I'm going to show you this because let's just treat these as B in isolation. So we haven't done A or B, we're just doing C, right? Okay, because you're going to get questions like that where you just, okay, look, here's the sequence of T. So if you don't see it from the beginning, you, where's the simplified form? I, you know. So just treat this as if this is just, like, this is part A, because we could have done this as part A, right? That's what we would have done. Okay, what's the first step you're going to do to solve this? No. Add 20 to both sides, right? We're going to get rid of that 20. So 651 is equal to n minus 1 times 7. Yeah, divide both sides by 7, right? A lot of people say, oh, let's make this 7n minus 7. That's just extra work, right? So, yeah, divide by 7, right? What is that? 93. So what's n? 94. Yes? doing lots of work, sure. Right. This is the this is the simplest, right? This is the least amount of work. This whole class is okay. like a big So you you don't wanna you don't wanna simplify this out and get all this right because look we could get the seven n minus twenty seven out of here. But you're doing way too much work if you're doing that, right? Just add twenty. Divide by seven. Add one. Done. Okay? I like the simpler ways. Simpler is better. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> Seeing none, next example. So each of these examples is something you're going to see, right? Uh, either on a worksheet, well, not sorry, a worksheet, but this is a worksheet. Okay, either on a worksheet like this, or as questions in the book, or as questions on the test, which will be coming up, uh, whatever, a week from Monday or something. I don't know. It's on your bridge. What? You just do it by inspection. There's addition, right? You just look at it and say, yeah, it's Monday, December 10th. Okay. Yeah, week from Monday. So, Because we don't have a Friday and we don't want to test it on the Thursday. So, this way. Because you're just finishing on the Wednesday. Okay. If 4 minus 2x, 3 minus x, and 8 plus 3x are the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence, then determine the value of x and the value of the first three terms. All right? So there is some number x such that if you substitute it in here, here, and here, the numbers that result will be an arithmetic sequence. 
We got to find out what x is. Oh. So we got to figure out how are we going to figure out what x is given this. What he said only is backwards. Okay, what do we know about D? D is T2 minus T1, right? T2 is 3 minus X. And T1 is 4 minus 2X. And I like to put brackets around things for two reasons. One, to keep them together. And two, more importantly, if there's a negative sign in there, so you don't mess up with the negative sign, right? So this is D is equal to, right, D is equal to T2 minus T1, right? Just look at the first page. D is equal to T2 minus T1. Okay, so let's remove the brackets. So that's 3 minus X minus 4 plus 2X. So that'll be X minus 1. Right, well, we must be that much closer to solving it because now we have four expressions involving X, you know, and numbers. But what else do we know? We know that D, what's another way to say D? T3 minus T2. So D is 8 plus 3X, and I'm going to bracket that, right? I like to keep thing terms in brackets. You guys should like to do that too, especially when you get to look at your cube, which you only get to look at but not keep, and say, oh, why didn't I put that in brackets? I would have got the signs right. Instead, I didn't, and they, all the signs are wrong. And You're looking at me. No, I you did something, but I don't think it was something that. I think you know how to keep your signs straight. Question, go for it. Shh. You did get that uh, that numeric response you did get. It's just by you filled in the bubbles correctly. What do we know about numerical responses? They're always positive. positive. So if you get a negative, what does that tell you? You're wrong. You're wrong. You messed up. Take a closer look. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so no. D if I say D is equal to this and D is equal to that, what can you say about this and that? X minus one is equal to same. Yeah, they're the same, right? If we have two different expressions for D, they must really be the same as each other, right? So we can now say X minus 1 must be equal to 4X plus 5. Or we can say 3X is negative 6, which allows us to then say X is negative 2, which thus solves the first part of the problem, which was determine the value of X. Okay? You will see this kind of problem, guaranteed, 100% probably on the test. But you're, you're never going to run into problems like this. And it's a modification of this problem when it's a geometric sequence. But you're going to see this kind of problem, right? And you have to know how to handle it. Or you say, OK, well, why not? Yeah, I know that d is this minus this. But wait, I know that d is this minus this. I now have two expressions for d. Well, that's true only if x is negative 2, right? They're equal to each other. So now, if we go back to here, I'll do over here, right? So t1 is 4 minus 2x. So it's negative 2. Which is 4 <laughs> minus 2 times negative 2, which is 8. And t2 is 3 minus x, which is 3 minus negative 2, which is 5. And t3 should be what? If it's 8, 5, what's next? 2. two. two. So it's 8 plus 3x which is 8 plus 3 times negative 2, which is 2. So the terms are 8, 5, 2, and they are the terms of an arithmetic sequence, right? Where the common difference is 3, and t1 is 8. So is that? That's full solution. It's all done. OK, that's, that's well, 4 plus 4. We're done. So okay. determine the value of x. Yep. And the value of the first three terms. Yep, got them here. Okay. T1, T2, okay. T3. Okay, so we're just, this had nothing to do with the actually making up a sequence for anything. We're just using that formula to figure out the values. No, you're told here is a sequence. Oh, okay. so what value of okay. x makes this an arithmetic sequence? 
You're freaking out by saying, I don't know much, but I know that I know that D is equal to this and D is equal to that, which means this and that are the same, and now I solve for X and then get your action. I kind of solved it a little bit differently. Okay. And well, How'd you do it? What I said before is just what I did, and I got the same answer, but would that always work, what I said? Or so you know? said, what, 4 minus 2x minus 3 minus x? Yeah. You'd be getting negative D then. Yeah, it was just negative D is equal to negative D. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Don't do it though, but yes. You'll see big x's on there, and then I'll go, oh, never mind. Across. Yeah, you're, just, you're getting expression for, you know, if you'd written negative D equals, and negative D equals, all right. Yeah, you're doing your own thing. Uh, yeah, because you got to somehow justify, why am I doing this, right? Like, what's my justification for being able to make this statement? Okay, determine how many terms there are, or how many terms are in the arithmetic sequence. Uh, Okay, what's T1? What's D? What's T sub N? What's T sub N? T sub N? N minus one. What's the nth term in that sequence? Okay. T1, T2, T3, T sub N. We don't know what it is, right? It's the nth term. So what's T sub N? And N is what we're trying to find. No, no. T sub n minus one. N is always last. Well, we're trying to figure out what term number is negative 14, right? Is it term 17? Is it term 82? Oh, yeah, it's the last one. So we're going to say, okay, look, it's T sub n, and we're going to figure out what n is if that's T sub n. Okay? So in this case, it's the last term in the given sequence. Forty-nine. All right. Let's see what this answer is. Okay. T sub n is T one plus n minus one times d. T sub n negative fourteen is T one one eighty two plus we don't know n right so n minus one times negative four. Make sure you put that in brackets right. So you can't write this. Okay. Don't write that because that just says subtract. Right. So put that. Okay, so we found T1, right, there it is, 182. We don't know what N is, we don't know how many terms are in this sequence, we're just saying, okay, that's term number N, and we're going to try and figure out what N is. Okay, so what's the first step? Subtract 182 from both sides. Okay, so the formula is always Tn equals T1 plus... Next step. So we... So you can assume that Tn would always be the last in the sequence, right? Yep. Okay. Last step. Maybe your idea was right. You just can now see that you need to refine it. Or whatever. This always works. Makes life easy. You're you've got you're you're on the right you're on the right track, right? But. You know, you're not going to mess up doing this. It's impossible. Okay, so a couple things to remember, right? N must be a natural number. So if you're solving, you get like N equals 47.2, you know you messed up. There cannot be a 47.2th term, right? There's a first term, a second term, a third, a 50th, a hundredth, a millionth, but there's nothing in between, right? I mean in between terms. There's no 49.5 terms, right? No term halfway. Okay, how many multiples of there? You might have seen questions like this in, in puzzle books growing up. Kind of. How many multiples of six are between 20 and 400? All right, is 20 a multiple of six? 21? 
What's multiple of six? 24. 24. So if we're going to make a sequence, it's going to start with 24. What's the next multiple of six? What's the next multiple of six? What's the last multiple of six? 396. You could take a calculator and go 400 divided by 6. No. 399 divided by 6. No. 397. If I try and divide that by 6, it would really be a waste of time. No. Because there's no multiple of 6 that ends in 7. The 398 might be reasonable. Okay. So what we're looking for is what we just finished doing, right? How many terms are in this sequence? Right? Because that will be the number of multiples of 6 between 20 and 400. Okay, what's T1? What's D? What's N? We don't know. What's T sub N? Whoa! Wait, why 24? Why is T1? That's the lowest possible. It's the first multiple of 6 between 20 and 400. Oh, wow, that's stupid. Wow. Okay, so smart, it's dumb. Yeah, I know, eh? It's just like, hey, let's just figure out what the first multiple of six is, the last multiple of six, we'll make a sequence out of it, we'll figure out how many terms there are in a sequence. Wow, that's brutal. Okay. So I'm not going to solve this yet. So T sub n is T1 plus n minus 1 times d. This is mechanical, right? It's just, just plug it in and, and you, don't have to, you don't even really have to think much. So 396. Is so 24 plus, not really, I mean, how much harder can they get? Again, make sure that's in brackets. Get your notation right. There's a lot of improper notation flying around. And if you need to, being as you're all big users of scrap paper, if you're going to work something out and it's a big mess, do it on scrap paper where it's not a big mess, right? Where it flows nice and logically and is easy to follow. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to subtract 24, right? And divide by 6. And we're going to add 1. And we're going to say there are 63 multiples of 6 between between like generous what you are it's not what I'm going to start doing okay yes no they're going to mess up but only changes on Wednesdays when it's a full moon otherwise it's all no but I mean like the n-1 if it's arithmetic, this is the point. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that. Just like the formula sheet I gave yesterday. You noticed on the formula sheet yesterday, it was all sequence on the The only formula on that sheet that you actually could use is a quadratic formula. Yeah, all the sequences in the series were that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just a waste of time. Sure. It's more work. Well, because you got to do an extra step, right? You you have to distribute the six through the n minus one. And what I do, I just divide and then I subtract. You distribute it, then you're going to subtract, then you're going to divide. It doesn't matter, same answer. It's not like it's, oh, that's five minutes more work if you do it that way, right? It's like, yeah, it's like, if the first term and the seventh term of an arithmetic sequence. You talk, I don't. The first term and seventh term of an arithmetic sequence are respectively 12 and negative 30, and then determine the 26th term of the sequence. So we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, right? Which is, uh, T26, which is what we're looking for ultimately, right? It's like, I can't get T26. I mean, not without knowing T1, right? So remember our formula. Let's write down formula. T sub n. 
is T1 plus N minus 1 times D. I want T26, so I know N is 26. Uh, I know T1, actually, 12. So, all right, I think we can do this. We don't know D, but we know T7, right? So we know that T7 is T1 plus 7 minus 1 times D. T7 is negative 30. T1 is 12. And there will be 6 Ds in there. Okay, so now we can figure out D. Then we'll know T1 and D, and we can get T26 from that. Okay, so negative 42 is 6D, and D is negative 7. T7. RTQ. Read the question. So they gave us T1, they gave us, so that's nice, right? If we didn't have T1, we'd be a little bit stuck. But eh, you know, I got T1, okay, and you want to, they gave me T7, I can figure out D, and I want T26. 25 times negative 6. You know what? I like to write out formulas and substitute in. I know it's boring a lot, but it's, it, it, there are some things I do mechanically. This is one I do mechanically, right? Which is any time I have a formula, I write it down, I substitute into it, and I solve it. And to me, a good chunk of math is formula, substitution, answer. Don't skip steps. Don't say, I know it's a 25 and that, right? Because you know, write it out. Just be mechanical about this stuff. So T26 is t1 which is 12 plus 26 minus 1 times d which we just figured out was negative 7. t26 is 12 plus 25 times negative 7 which is what negative 175 so a negative 163. t26 is negative 163. Right, when I got formulas, I don't skip much in the way of steps. I like to just write down the formula, substitute into it. Okay? It's not like you save a whole pile of time by intuiting your way through it. Like, oh, I know this is that and this is that. Usually what happens is you make a mistake and then you, know, you lose marks. It's not worth it. Okay, I'll give you a second to copy that down. That's all it's on. All right, then what? We got two, three more? Two more? Excellent. Okay, all done? Totally Next. In an arithmetic sequence, T12 is 30 and T13 is 20. Okay, nice. They're consecutive terms, which means that we know what? D. What's D? D is equal to? Negative 5. Determine the simplified form of the general term. Okay, remember, if we're doing a simplified general term, we need T1 and we need D. We don't want N because we're going to use N as part of the expression, and we don't want T sub N because, again, those two are part of the expression. But in order to do this, then we need T sub 1. And all we know, well, what do we know? Well, we know that's T13. Uh, or 163. Okay, so let's try it. So we know... Okay, so we know T13, right? So 25 is equal to T1 plus 13 minus 1 times negative 5. Okay, yeah, really helpful, right? Because the only thing we don't know is T1, so we can work it out now. your wait what moment? Um, why is 25? Well, they gave me T13 is 25, so I'm substituting T13 for T. No, like, like, would it matter if it was equals Nope. If I put 30 in there, then N would be 12. Plus N minus four. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh. So I put in T13, and that means that N is 13. If I put in T12, then I'd have a 30. It's still going to work out to 85. But we want the general term, so we're partway there. Yeah, it's 
T sub n is the nth term. It's really so how not the last. How do you know t thirteen is the last term? It's not going to go on. No, no, no. T, t sub n is any given term. It's the one. And in this right. case, I know it's t thirteen, which means I know n is thirteen for that term. For the term twenty five, I know the value of n is thirteen. So when I put the twenty five in for t sub n, I at this point know that this n value is a thirteen. Okay. okay? I could have put in thirty is equal to t1, but 30 is t12, so that means that n would be 12. Okay, so that's 30 is equal to t1 uh, minus 55, and t1 is 85. Okay, so we're talking the nth term. It's not the last term, it's any given term, it's any term. Right, when you're given a sequence, it starts here, ends here, then that's t sub n. The last term is t sub n. We're trying to figure out how many terms there are. Oh, so that way you, you can't substitute any term for t sub n in that situation. Yeah, any of these two terms, because we know them. We don't know any other terms, so we can't do any of them. Okay. Okay? Now, what we want to do is we want an expression for the general term, right? Which is t sub n is equal to t1 plus n minus 1 times d. When we're doing the general term, we leave the t sub n. We need t1. We leave the n, right? We don't put a value on it, but we do need the d. And all we want to do is simplify this expression. So t sub n is 85 minus 5n plus 5. So t sub n is 90 minus 5n, or it might be written as negative 5n plus 90. Okay, and again, because you operate in a world where there are multiple choice questions, you have to be able to say, oh yeah, okay, that's the same answer, it's just in a slightly different form. Right? Oh, they divided everything by negative one, and that changed all the signs, but that's the answer that I got. Right? Especially next year, because it's, well, actually there's fewer multiple choice than there used to be, but it's 28, your diploma is 28 multiple choice and 12 numerical response, which means really, really want to read the numerical response to see what the answer is. It ran to the nearest tenth, nearest hundredth, whatever, right? Because wow, you, you don't want to solve it correctly and then lose a mark on your diploma, which is 1.25% of your final mark. Every mark on that diploma is one and a quarter percent of your final mark in that course next year. Okay. Every single mark, one and a quarter percent. So you don't want to lose one and a quarter percent, not because you don't know what you're doing, be but because you didn't read to the nearest whole number and you gave it to the nearest tenth or something, right? So you, you really got to get careful on multiple choice. Yeah. Year before it was 33 and 7, so there were five fewer to mess up on. But Okay, well, let's try this. Okay, so T12, right? T negative 5 times 12 is negative 60 plus 90 is 30. T13, negative 65, oh, 25, right? So it works. I can see that general term, right? If I want t100, it's negative 500 plus 90, negative 410. Okay, so this is a nice general term, right? You're only plugging the n in once, you multiply it, and you're adding or subtracting a number. So most arithmetic sequence general terms look like this, right? It's like some multiple of a number plus. And the interesting multiple of the number is this is always d. Isn't it plus, right? Watch. T sub n is equal to T1 plus n minus 1 times d, which is T1 plus dn minus d, which is dn. These are both numbers, right? T1 and d are just numbers. The n is the n, right? That's why that's a negative 5n. So it's a multiple of the common difference. That's what you're doing, really, right? It's, it's, I'm starting with 90, right? T1 is, uh, T1 is 85. I'm really starting with 85. T1 is 85. T2, then you're going to do what? You're going to you know, subtract 5, and then subtract 5, and so on, or add 5, or whatever the heck it is. Which way are you going? No, subtract 5. So T1 is 85, and then you're subtracting 5 each time, right? So that's why each n value is negative 5n, right? because you're going down by 5. All right, next. In arithmetic sequence, t13, now the last one was nice because they were consecutive. It was easy to figure out d. 
Here, we have T13 and T18. So let's just get an idea what this looks like. T13, T14, T15, T16, T17, T18. I'm just going to write this underneath, T13. You don't have to do this every time you do one of these, right? But I just want you to see what are we actually looking at here. Okay, so that's what we're looking at, right? I got T13. Now, the way this question sometimes comes up, and we're not doing an example of it, but the wording might just be, here's the sequence. It starts at 54, ends at 14. There's four terms in the middle. I want this to be an arithmetic sequence. And the way we say it is we say something like, insert four arithmetic means between 54 and 14. In other words, you got a sequence that goes 54, four numbers, you know, number, 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 and then 14, and this sequence has to be arithmetic. Okay? Now in this case, they're really saying, determine the first two terms of the sequence. But here's how we handle this type of question. Right? Again. <coughs> If in doubt, where do I start? Well, it's an arithmetic sequence, so all we have to go on is a formula for an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so if nothing else, start by writing that out. And then just sort of say, all right, what do I know? Uh, okay, I know T13, right? So if I write a 54 here, that's T13. I don't know T1, but I do know that N is 13, and I don't know D. So 54 is equal to T1, this is T13, right, is T1 plus 12D. Let's just simplify this. 54 is T1 plus 12D. I can do anything else with that? Not really, I'm kind of stuck. Okay, so fine, you know, that's interesting. What's that? Well, what else do we know? Well, we know that 14 is T1 plus, what's N for 14? 18 minus 1 times D. So 14 is equal to T1 plus 17 D. How many equations? How many unknowns? What are we going to do? We're going to solve a system. Now, here's the nice thing about it. You're always going to solve these by elimination. Why? Because they both have a T1. So we're just going to put one on top of the other and subtract. How are we going to do that? Let's take the larger D value, stick it up top. So let's write 14 is equal to T1 plus 17 D. And underneath, we'll write 54 is T1 plus 12 D. And we will subtract and get negative 40 is equal to 5 D. And so D is negative 8. Now when we solve a system, now that we got D, we stick it back into one of those equations and we get T1. And once we have T1 and D, we can easily write the first two terms of this sequence. So let's just sort of pop up here and go 14 is equal to T1 plus 17 D. 14 is equal to T1 plus 17 times negative 8. 14 is equal to T1 minus, what is that, 80 and 56, 126. So T1 is 140. So T1 and T2, first term, second term, they ask. So T2 is equal to, well, let's add negative 8, 132. There are the first two terms of that sequence. Okay, so if the question says arithmetic means, or if the question is like this, right? In other words, if they're split, then really what you're doing is you got to figure out what the difference is, right? What's the difference that make that will make this sequence arithmetic? Okay. I'm gonna wait a second while you copy this out. We'll back up a little bit and just take a look at the sequence, right? Start at 54, and the difference was eight, negative eight, right? So you're gonna go from 54 to 46 to 38 to 30 to 22 and then to 14. So the four terms you're going to put in between are uh, 46, 38, 30, 22. And then 14 comes back. Now I'll show you the easy way. If 8 times 17 doesn't equal 126. No, how much is it? 
136. Well, you should speak up. So that's 150 and 142. You guys, you just let me write stuff just because it was. Well, you must know how to multiply without a calculator, so. That's because 7 times 8 is 56, not 42. I don't know. Whatever. 150, 142. If you write in pen, blame yourself. Okay, do you want to see an easy way to do part of this? Yes. Yeah. All right, so here's the easy way. Now, you still should be, will be able to show this work, right? To get the two systems and solve. But the easy way is kind of this, right? It's like, okay, this is plus 1D, plus 2D, plus 3D, plus 4D, plus 5D. So 14 is equal to 54 plus 5 times D which means negative 40 is equal to 5D, and D is negative 8. You still have to also be able to get T1, though, right? So you're going to have to at least write one of these two equations. I prefer it if you just nicely do the system and that, but as long as you show work, the problem with this is you could mess up. If you count wrong, then the whole thing goes wrong, right? And usually not wrong in a good way. You know, wrong in a good way is, oh, I lost a half a mark on a one mark question. Wrong in a bad way is, I spent 20 minutes or, you know, five minutes working out something that never worked out on a three mark question because I messed up on the very first part, right? Wrong in a bad way is, oh, I factored that wrong and I lost all the marks, okay? Because it just worked out wrong. Okay, is that it? We done? We done.